Hey everybody, it's Kinesis Crab, and I realized today that since my mic is so sensitive, I might be able to try my hand at an ASMR style video. I'm sure that's not what anyone came here for, but you might as well give it a shot, you know? So in this video, it's going to be mostly me talking, some maybe light computer whirring in the background. And I'm going to be reading a story, so there might be some page turning as well. I don't know whether or not that will be picked up very well in the audio. But today, since I couldn't really find the book I wanted to read, um, I settled for a different book. And we're going to be reading The Indignation of Haruhi Susumiya by Nagaru Tanigawa. Or we're at least going to be reading a part of it. First released in Japan in 2003, The Melancholy of Haruhi Susumiya quickly established itself as a publishing phenomenon. Drawing much of its inspiration from Japanese pop culture and Japanese comics in particular, with this foundation, the original publication of each book in the Haruhi series included several black and white spot illustrations, as well as a four page color insert, all of which are faithfully reproduced here to preserve the authenticity of the first ever English edition. The first story in this book, it's about two or three stories, I believe. I don't quite remember. It's been a while since I've read it is called Editor-in-Chief, Full Speed Ahead. No good, said Haruhi flatly, thrusting the manuscript back. It's not good enough, whined Asahina, but I thought about it really hard. Yeah, no way, not even close. It's got no punch. Haruhi leaned back in the chair at her brigade chief's desk and grabbed the red pen she'd stuck behind her ear. Just for starters, this introduction is such a cliche. Once upon a time, it's got no freshness to it at all. It needs a twist. The intro has to be super catchy, got it? First impressions are critical. But, said Asahina tremulously, that's how fairy tales are supposed to start. That thinking is obsolete. Harley's rejection was haughty and total. You need to transform your approach. If you think you might have heard something before, then do the opposite. That's the way to bring something new to life. I got the feeling that the reason it felt like we were leaving the original point of all this activity far behind was thanks to the system Haruhi had just described. It certainly wasn't like threatening, feigned of a pitcher who was trying to hold a fast runner at first base, but just doing the opposite wasn't going to work either. Anyway, this is no good, Haruhi deliberately wrote rewrite with her red pen on the copy paper manuscript then tossed it into a cardboard box beside the desk. In the box, which formerly had contained oranges, was a mountain of papers she decided was bound for the incinerator. Write something new. Ugh. Shoulders slumping, Asahina made her way back to her own seat. She looked truly pathetic. I felt violently sympathetic to her as she picked up a pencil, then held her head in her hands. I cast my gaze over to a corner of the table from which emitted nothing at all. From which emanated nothing at all. And there was that most important fixture for the club room, Nagato, who was not reading. She stared at the display of laptop computers in front of her, stock still, typing something on the computer every few seconds, whereupon she would try it and nip, whereupon she would turn inanimate yet again. Nagato was using the laptop we'd won in our battle against the computer club. Similar machines were in front of both Koizumi and myself, their CPU cooling fans spinning away, despite the CPUs themselves not really having anything to think about. Koizumi's fingers typed away deftly, the sound of each keystroke grating on my nerves. How nice for him that he decided he was going to write about. That he decided what he was going to write about. Asahina. The only one of us to express a prejudice against using machines was writing by hand on a sheet of copy paper, but she'd stopped as though synchronized with me. Of course I'd stopped. How was I supposed to type with nothing to write? That goes for everybody else too, 
Haruhi alone was strangely energetic. If you don't hurry to hand in those manuscripts and get the editing done, he won't make it in time for publication. Time to shift into high gear. On the right page is an anime manga style drawing of Haruhi and Asahina with a word bubble of Haruhi saying no good. In the drawing is Haruhi holding the stack, the stack of papers assumed to be Asahina's manuscript. Just think a little harder and you'll be able to write something. It's not like we're writing epics or aiming for literary prizes here. As usual, Haruhi's cheerful face bloomed with that strange energy of hers, like she was about to devour an insect. Kyon, I don't see your hands moving. Sitting there staring at the screen isn't going to get a sentence written. Just write the thing, then print it out, and let me take a look at it. If it's good, it passes, and if it's not, then it won't. My sympathy for Asahina turned into pity for myself. Why did I have to do this anyway? And it wasn't just me. Shouldn't the moaning Asahina beside me and the beatifically smiling Koizumi across from me be raising some kind of flag of mutiny? All that said, the brigade chief known as Haruhi Suzumiya specialized in not listening to anything anybody said. Still, why had she decided on this particular role of all things? My gaze moved from Haruhi who sat there just itching for people to toss their manuscripts into the cardboard box, to the armband wrapped around her arm, normally a red brigade chief, though in the past it had also been detective and ultra director. But now a new title was scribbled on the cloth in a large magic marker letters. It was editor-in-chief. This all started a few days earlier. It was a day in the third term of school as the footsteps of the approaching new year were starting to become inaudible were starting to become audible. It happened during an otherwise peaceful lunch hour. A bit more warning would have been nice. Summons. It was Yuki Nagato who spoke. For some reason, she was accompanied by the ever-composed Itsuki Koizumi. The two of them com coming by my classroom together didn't give me much as a single micron of anything like a good feeling. And although I'd been the one who interrupted the busyness of stirring up my lunch to come into the hallway, I wanted nothing more than to get back to my own desk. What do you mean, summons? I could only think of my current situation. Taniguchi had been on his way back from buying some pastries and a melon drink when he'd called out, Hey Kyon, your cohorts are here. Which was why I'd gotten up and was now standing where I was. The particular pairing that confronted me was wholly unlikely, but as far as a suitable partner for Nagato to pair up with went, I couldn't think of a single person I'd approve of. After looking for about three seconds at the alien girl, who'd stood there after delivering her mysterious summons, I gave up and regarded Koizumi's handsome face. So are you going to explain? Of course, that's why I've come, said Koizumi, craning his neck to look inside Class 5A's classroom. Do you think Susamiya will be out here for a while? She'd taken off right after fourth period ended. I figured she was munching away on her lunch in the cafeteria right about now, I said. Excellent. This is something I'd rather she not hear. I got the feeling it was going to be something I'd rather not hear, too. Actually, Koizumi lowered his voice. It seemed like he was enjoying this, I told him. Well, whether or not one finds this enjoyable depends on the person. Just tell me what it is already. We've received a message from the student council president. We're to appear in the student council room today after school. In short, it is a summons. I suddenly understood. So it's finally come, eh? In order to appear in front of the student council president, I wasn't so naive that I couldn't imagine why such a thing would happen. I was too good of a person to ignore the many misdeeds perpetrated by the SOS Brigade both in and out of the school this past year. Had it been the time we'd scammed the computers from the computer club, no, wait, we'd settled that in trial by video game combat the previous autumn. I'd heard that the president of the computer club had withdrawn his complaint with the student council after the loss. Was it because we'd gone too far when we filmed our movie? That had been a while ago by now, and student council elections had been after the school festival. Had the student council suddenly remembered the business left to them by the previous administration? Or had the physical descriptions of the brigade members that had surely circulated among the neighborhood shrines and temples finally made it to North High? We'd visited a few too many places during our first shrine visit of the new year, after all. 
guess there's nothing we can do about it, I said, shrugging and looking back at my unoccupied desk next to the window. I bet Haruhi will be thrilled to go mano a mano with the president. Depending on their attitudes, this could turn violent. I'm counting on you for meditation. I'm counting on you for mediation, Koismi. You misunderstand. Koismi pleasantly refuted me. It is not Susamiya who is being summoned. So, what? It was me. Come on, that didn't make any sense. It would be the height of injustice if I had to bear the full brunt of the backlash because Harley was as defiant and stubborn as a mule. I knew the student council members were basically the school administration puppets, but if they were that cowardly, I'd be pretty disappointed. No, it's not you, said Koizumi even more pleasantly, like he was happy about something. It is Nagato alone who has been summoned. What? That made even less sense. She was great as a target for lecturing, since she'd certainly sit there and silently listen to whatever you said. But I didn't think it'd be very satisfying for the lecturer, since she'd just as certainly stick to her no-comments policy. Nagato. The student council president wants to see Nagato. Your subject and object are both correct. Yes, the president has indicated Nagato. As for Nagato herself, she simply stood there, as though she had no thoughts of herself at all. She accepted the wave of surprise that emanated from my eyes, her hair fluttering minutely. What do you mean? What business does the student council have with Nagato? Don't tell me they want to make her secretary. I wanted him to just spill it out already. Was his infuriatingly roundabout manner carved into his DNA? My apologies. I'll explain it as understandably as I can. The reason Nagato has been summoned is simple. They want to discuss the literature club's activities particularly in regards to its ongoing existence. The Literature Club, what does... What does that have to do with anything, I was about to say, but choked back the words. Nagato, still unmoving, looked behind, looked down the hall. Her pale, once bespeckled face looked just as it had back then. I would never forget how she looked when Haruhi had burst into the club room, dragging me along, and Nagato had looked slowly, expressionlessly up at us. I see... The Literature Club, eh? So that's how it is. The SOS Brigade's long occupation of the Literature Club's room. For its headquarters was the very embodiment of the present progressive tense. And for today, that will be all. If you enjoyed this video or you'd like to see more in the future, please leave a comment telling me and I'll take it into consideration for sure. If there's anything else you'd like me to do with this, then let me know if you'd just like me to finish the story in a normal reading. Also, please tell me. Um, otherwise, this has been Kinesis Crab, and I'll see you next time. I hope you've enjoyed this ASMR.